score with Babe Laufenberg starts now. Welcome to The Score, presented by the Cannes Academies of Dallas-Fort Worth. I've had a lot worse happen to me than uh, a loss in a sporting event, that's for sure. And if, if this is the worst thing that ever happens to me, then I've lived a pretty good life. And that was the last time we saw Tony Romo, and those comments came in Philadelphia after the Cowboys' worst loss in 20 years. Tonight, he explains those comments and much, much more. Good evening and welcome to The Score. Hello everyone, I'm Babe Lofmerg. We appreciate you joining us tonight. Now at the start of last season, the Cowboys were a Super Bowl favorite. We all know that. By the end, they were a team in turmoil, as evidenced by the 44-6 beating they took at the hands of the Philadelphia Eagles. So how did it all go so wrong, and what can the Cowboys do to prevent it from happening next season? We figured there's only one way to find out. That'd be to talk to quarterback Tony Romo. So we did, and we start where the season ended. Your comments after the Philadelphia game were not well received. Mm -hmm. Do you wish you could have a do-over on that press conference? No, I think um, yeah, we live and we learn and we you know we teach ourselves all the time different things. But you know, part of it was the grind of the entire season. You know, it was mentally taxing as far as dealing with um, you know everything surrounding our team. The Cowboy fan, he was bleeding through his eyeballs. Mm -hmm. He thought he was going to the playoffs. He thought he might be getting Super Bowl tickets. And so did we. It's Philadelphia. <laughs> and, and he wanted, I think the Cowboy fan wanted you, he and she, mm -hmm. to be bleeding through your eyeballs. And, and it almost seemed to be a kind of a cavalier approach yeah. in the press conference mm -hmm. to losing. You understand that perception? Oh, no question. I think everybody, and I'm the same way. When I sit there and watch and I see something, um, I'm the same way toward you. I'm like, oh, he may not care as much or blah, blah, blah. But it's funny when you're in this situation because for me, um, I'm the one who had to go home and think about it for the next 48 straight hours without sleeping much at all. And then, you know, I'm the one, that, so I'm trying to make myself somehow feel better about it. I'm trying to sit there and tell myself everything will be okay, even though inside you feel like it's not, even though you feel like you didn't accomplish anything. You know, even though you felt like you didn't obtain any of the goals that you set out and worked your butt off for the previous six months before the season and then into the last four months of the season, um, it's hard to swallow. You know, as a competitor, as an athlete, as someone who, um, you know, tries to continually reach um, another level, I think, each year that I play the game, it's very disappointing to know that you, you didn't. And, um, you know, I'll learn from it, and I'll come back and be better from it. He pulls it down, he's hit, he fumbled. Picked up by the Eagles, and here they go from the 30. What'd you learn from the Philadelphia game? A fumble return, and the Eagles had another touchdown. We allowed a lot of the, the, um, the ability of uh, outside whatever to seep into our locker room, probably. You know, it was a grind, obviously, anytime you're not winning all your football games, and we didn't um, do what we needed to do to continue going forward and, and go toward the goal. So I think uh, we learned the lesson that if we just keep grinding, keep staying together, and keep going forward, you can, you can still accomplish what you try to set out and accomplish. An NFL season ends well for only one of the 32 yeah. starting quarterbacks. <laughs> this year, obviously, it was Roethlisberger. But your seasons have ended. We had. Seattle with the bobble. We had the Giants losing at home as a number one seed. And then this past year, 44 to six at Philadelphia. Any of those losses any more difficult to deal with than the other? Well, they're all difficult. I think uh, I'm learning that um, they're all very hard to swallow and very, you know, tough in their own way. I think that you know, you can learn certain things as a team about yourselves as you um, play in those games. You know, we've, we've won some big games just before those. I think that, um, you know, for us, it's just taking the next step, figuring out what each individual needs to do to improve, what each individual needs to do to take his game up a notch, and um, we're going to do that this year. Collectively, as a group, we're all going to look at each other, and we're going to say it's, it's time to pick it up. And um, we're going to play good football next year. 
Good football players don't win football games. Good football teams do. And when you lose 44 to 6 in your season finale, plenty of finger pointing will start. And some of those fingers were pointed at the coaching staff. There was also a thought that you had thrown your offensive coordinator, Jason Garrett, under the bus after that game. And in fairness, now you weren't the only one. You weren't the only player. I mean, the reality is, in a game like that, there's so many emotions flying around. I mean, everyone's mad at everybody. Everyone thinks that nobody else did their job. Everybody thinks that, you know, that's part of playing in a high-level uh, competition environment where a lot of people care. You know, everybody wants to make sure that no one points a finger at at themselves and that's part of um, you know being a great athlete is to know that you can do it you always believe in yourself and it's you know, but I think the, this team going forward needs to look at themselves each one of us and and say we need to get better uh, what do we need to do individually to make this group better and you know I don't think they'll be near as much uh, finger pointing this year I don't think they'll be near as much um, you know, this group's going to stay together. What, what gives you that feeling? Because if you just come back and nothing changes yeah, you know, and... Hey, and I've heard it before, and Sanity's doing the same thing over yeah, and over okay. again, expecting different results. So what's going to change? I think, I think one area, obviously, is that we're going to be a little bit uh, stricter in certain things we want to see done. Uh, yeah, I think our team works hard on the football field. But we may need to uh, refine it to not just working hard, but being technically, you know, on point every single, well, if we need to be here, we need to be at this thing, we're going to do it. And we're not going to, you know, a word that uh, Jason used was, we're not going to compromise. We're not going to say, well, we'll get it. No, we're going to do it. And we're going to do it again. We're going to do it again. And that's our approach going forward. That's, you know, we can give 90, 95%, and it's better than most probably. But we're not gonna. We're gonna. We're gonna give it. We're gonna give 100 percent every day that we're out there. We're gonna do it, and we're gonna see where that takes us. A number of players also questioned your practice habits. Yeah. I'm sure you're aware of. I think that's kind of. I mean, is fair. it fair? No, it's not fair. And why did those come about? I think, like I said, emotions run high. Everyone, people, you know, want to do different things to deflect. You know, and that's part of being in, in the position of quarterback. Everyone has an opinion. Everyone wants to have an idea why we're not winning. And how much do you think jealousy plays a part in that? You're kind of the face of the franchise. You got the big contract. You have the no, famous girlfriend. I don't think it's jealousy. I don't think that's part of it. I just think that people want to win. You know, they want to be a part of something special. And we all want to experience what um, it feels like to be on top at the end. And when you don't, it's very frustrating and it's difficult. And you want to, like, figure out why. You want to have answers, and you want them right now. The reality of it is, we just weren't good enough. You know, you can say it every which way you want, and we just didn't perform good enough this last year. So we're going to figure out how to be better next year and perform when it counts, and to be better on a on a daily basis. And that's going to be our number one goal and our number one job going forward. Wade Phillips' job was certainly uh, in jeopardy, or at least we. Most people viewed it as in jeopardy, especially after 44 to 6 at Philadelphia, and he is coming back. How do you view that? Is that a good thing for this franchise? You know, I think that bringing Wade back was a was a very good call. You know, I'm excited about it. I think that he's done a lot of good things that you guys don't get a chance to see, and um, you know, I think I think we got a great shot for next year with him at the helm. If you're not going to change the coach, then and 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 you don't get the results you want, then you need to change something. Coach needs to change the thing. What I do is going to change. And he said the Monday after the, the loss of Philadelphia that he's going to change. Mm -hmm. Basically, he knows he needs to change. How is that change going to be received? The boss can change. The guy who's, who's leading can, can do that. You know. Now, people got to believe in you, and I think they do believe in Wade, because he's, you know, number one, you got to know football. You know, football people believe in you. You know, then it comes to um, doing other little things that separate yourself. I think, but Wade has that, and um, you know, I think that whatever approach is, it's going to be from him. I think that he's been around the league a long time, and that he's going to um, put us in the best pos possible situation to win. Leadership questions have arisen for this football team. Mm -hmm. Organizationally, 